Hello, Popper fans. This is Mythonical, and we are playing Rally Gone. This is round three, and our opening hand is, albeit a little risky, is completely keepable. One more land means we have to play all of our Midnight Guards, and a lot of people are very afraid of them and will remove them on site, so having multiples is a good thing. Battle Screech is one of our best cards as a standalone, and Soul's Tenants can win a lot of matchups completely on its own, so we're happy to keep this one. Our opponent is known for playing Boros Monarch. He's top aided with it a few times. So he did message me there thinking that we were going to be going in for the mirror match. Not this time. We're going back to our roots of Rally Gond. So this is a very interesting matchup, as you will see over the course of the game. They have a lot of removal effects, and it's our job to navigate around it and kind of invalidate them over time. And Battle Screeches are extremely useful in this matchup. Since they play a lot of flyers and are value based, our Battle Screeches are able to get that kind of value back. We've got our three mana online, so we're going to be able to start casting Midnight Guards. One more mana gives us our Battle Screeches. That's all great. Uh, our opponent is going through and playing basically their mini Muldrifters, being able to draw cards while playing Glint Hawks. That's fine by us. He goes ahead and gets rid of our Midnight Guard. This is why we like having multiples. Uh, we go ahead and cast uh, Commune with the Gods there because we are kind of looking for a protection effect to get into, like uh, a Prismatic Strands to get into our graveyard so we have a free protection effect in the future. We're also looking for the Presence of God, which we get there. Um, for, we didn't get any extra value, that's fine. We now have the Prismatic Strands, so we're going to hold this up and use this. And now we've got the protection effect we're looking for uh, for our Midnight Guard. We throw both creatures in front of this, hoping that they're going to burn one of our creatures, and so we'd lose both, and then we'd uh, use our Prismatic Strands anyways. But he doesn't fall for that. We Prismatic Strands, he ends up bolting one afterwards. That's great for us, because now we're going to be able to play our Midnight Guard with Prismatic Strands backup, and things are looking pretty good. So we continue on with our plan. Uh, except instead of playing the Midnight Guard here, since we drew the extra land, we actually play the Battle Screech. The reasoning for that is we're going to gain 4 life and have 4 power in the air worth of blockers. This is going to completely invalidate their entire air attack. And Midnight Guard, since they still have 4 or 5 cards in hand, it even, we have 1 protection effect. It's still very possible to get it removed. So this is a much safer plan to just play out a ton of Battle Screeches. Our opponent actually concedes to the second one, uh, just because their Boros Monarch doesn't actually have many ways, if any ways, main board to deal with eight power worth of flyers. Uh, we're going to be able to trade into any flyers he plays, any creatures he plays for the rest of the game. If he ever plays the Boros Monarch, we're going to be able to get in and do damage. And this is just setting us up to, in the long game, there isn't any ways for our opponent to win since Boros Monarch plays a lot of one-for-ones with a little extra advantage for uh, drawing some extra cards here and there along the way, so Battle Screech is our way of getting many cards per card. Jumping into game two, we'll pull up the sideboard. So this is a very interesting matchup that... The win condition isn't to go infinite here, so we pull out two Presence of Gons. We still want the option to, and we still want to put the fear into their heart that we're going to, but that is no longer our main game plan. Uh, so because of that, we are taking out some of our protection effects, and what we are bringing in is the Spider Silk Armors. These are absolutely amazing in the, in the matchup. It allows us to block all of their flyers, protects us from electricaries and the like, and we also pull in the one Hollow, uh, once again, we want to protect against electricaries. It's also a one mana protection against any kind of bolt effect if we're trying to go infinite. And we don't want to bring any enchantment removal since our main plan is to just invalidate their flying creatures. We have no need to remove them. And in my opinion, it's a losing battle to try and remove their flyers, especially since a lot, like, depending on which list they're playing, they play some enchantment removal. And being able to remove one of these with a creature underneath it 
it's just extra value that they're going to get and we don't want to deal with anything like that. So with our kind of like lock sideboarding done, we'll take a look at our opening hand. This hand is unfortunately not keepable. Uh, one of the downsides of having a Survivor's Encampment's opening hand is it provides no colors, but even if this was a white source, this is still not a keepable hand. we got to make sure we can play some stuff. So we send this one back. This is a much better hand. Uh, that should be fairly self-evident, even though it doesn't have anything early going on. The Spider Silk Armor is the best card in this matchup, and Battle Screech is going to be the second best. Creating extra tokens to go along with Spider Silk Armor is amazing. And since we already have four mana sources to play both these cards, it's great. And any extra lands we draw at some point in the future, we're going to be able to cash in for extra tokens. So this is setting us up perfectly for the long game. Land on top, we're going to ship that to the bottom since we already have all the land we need. And Prismatic Strands, that's going to protect us. That's the, essentially, that's the nail in the coffin. We're going to be able to protect against any double electricries at some point in the future. We're going to basically have all the protection we could possibly want. They journey our Soul Sister. This is really good for them uh, because their main way of trying to win is to burn us out. And gaining life stops their plan. But uh, we have our, well, we get another Souls Attendance. We can lose our guy to some burn effect, but we're okay with that. We could have played a Battle Screech, but we want to have, just in case they're playing some kind of exiling effect for the Graveyard, we want to have the ability to flash it back immediately. So we go ahead, we cast it, we flash it back, and we're already off to the races. He needs to have double electricery this turn or next turn. He's playing a battle creature of his own, that's fine. Ours are better, thanks to this wonderful card. Uh, here we don't want to commit both of our battle screeches into the face of the possible double electricery, so we go ahead and put in a Sends Enlistment. Or actually, a, I lied, a Midnight Guard, just in case we draw the combo. I believe we will cast a Sends Enlistment for the battle screech though. Just a uh, yeah. Our opponent, though, is they're probably not looking at the greatest hand, uh, especially considering what we have lined up. So we had a little discussion there. If he's running anything similar to my list, his only out on this board state is double electricery right now. Uh, I'm going to be looking to keep up this prismatic strands, and even if he did double electricery us at this point, we already have all the tools we need to completely rebuild. And there is no way that they're going to win this. There is ways that they prevent us from winning, but we will deck them at some point because they will draw multiple cards if they ever play a Monarch. So our opponent does concede here. This is, at this point, in a nearly an unwinnable matchup, and unless you have double electricity right now or even just one in hand, your, your winning chances are zero. So yeah, that is how this round ends. Please join me for round four.